Next question, what's the difference between chronic Lyme disease and post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome? Well, back in the early 2007-2008 period, um, it was clear that patients who received treatment for Lyme disease did not always respond to treatment, i.e. they had persistent symptoms after the recommended treatment. Um, so for example, patients had the clinical diagnosis of Lyme disease, the classic rash, they were given the appropriate antibiotic treatment, they got better. But when the antibiotics were stopped, they got worse. With any other condition, uh, this is called relapsing infection. Uh, the term was then uh, coined by Infectious Disease Society of America, post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome, PTLDS. And this term does, then was used to say, we don't know what's going on. There either could be ongoing infection, this could be a post-infectious inflammatory condition, autoimmune condition, but it didn't really specify what was going on. Um, I commonly believe that the term P, rather than post-treatment Lyme disease, should be partially treated Lyme disease syndrome or persistent Lyme disease syndrome. We really don't know if there's ongoing symptoms. Uh, however, uh, people have used this term to say that you've had your treatment, uh, I know you're not better, but we can't give you more antibiotics because the guidelines say three weeks of treatment or even back then two weeks of treatment and you're cured. But the reality is we don't have good tissue-based diagnostics, we don't have PCR, we don't have antigen tests. And my observation is many people do get better with longer courses of treatment uh, who initially respond and then relapse. So, so this is the origin of the term PTLDS, post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome, and many patients believe it's a term that's used to deny them treatment. Um, I think it can be a helpful uh, term if used to just define that patients receive treatment, uh, responded to treatment, or actually failed treatment, but this should not deny them further assessment and further consideration for treatment as guidelines are guidelines. Uh, guidelines are not laws and as long as there's a clinical indication it's perfectly ethical and in, in fact it's unethical not to continue treatment uh, for any infectious disease because patients do not always fit into guidelines. Patients are patients and treatment should be individualized.